بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So I will begin with this book uh, Some of the birds have already been through this book We will go through again inshallah so we can get the recordings The book is called Sharhu uh, Matan Lusul Sita So the explanation of the six principles uh, by Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah, and the explanation is uh, has been done by uh, Shaykh Abdul Razak ibn Abdul Muhsin al-Badr Hafizullah. so um, we'll go through this inshallah probably take us maybe seven eight weeks to complete uh, depending on how quickly we go through it so um We'll just read and then uh, translate uh, each paragraph, inshallah, step by step, as we've done previously. So the Shaykh begins the introduction by um, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then sending uh, blessings and salutations upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's in the first paragraph. And then he goes on to say, he says, فَبَيْنَ أَيْدِينَا رِسَالَةٌ قَيِّمَةٌ مُخْتَصِرَةٌ لِلْإِيمَامِ الْمُجَدِّدْ شَيْخُ الْإِسْلَامِ مُحَمَّدِ بْنُ عَبْدُ الْوَهَابِ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ جَمْعَ فِيهَا أُصُولٌ سِتَّةٌ عَظِيمَةٌ بَيِّنَتْ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ بَيَانًا وَافِيًا وَذُكِرَتْ لَهَا الدَّلَائِلَ الْبَ في كتاب الله عز وجل وستة وسنة رسوله بحيث كانت واضحة وضوحا لا خفاء فيه وظاهرة ظهورا ظهورا لا التباس فيه ومع ذلك فقد ظل فيها أكثر الناس وانحرفوا فيها عن جادة السواب وعن الطريق السوية وقد نصح هذا الإمام رحمه الله بجمعه هذه الرسالة المشتملة على أصول ستة من أصول هذا الدين المبين في الكتاب وسنة مشيرا إلى أهميتها وعظم شأنها وعظم شأنها ومنبها في الوقت نفسه على نوع انحراف الذي وقع فيه أكثر الناس فيما يتعلق so the Shaykh begins and he says that in front of us we have a, a short book or a short treatise and a short treatise, a very beneficial one uh, um, authored by the Imam and the reviver of the Sunnah and the Deen uh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah and in this book uh, there are six principles that are brought together. Six principles are brought forth. Uh, six magnificent principles that that are from the Book of Allah and that have been mentioned in the Book of Allah and have been clarified in the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, with a clear clarification. So these principles are actually from the Quran. And there's evidences mentioned and, you know, points and evidences mentioned in clarifying uh, these uh, uh, these principles, these clear principles from the Book of Allah Azza wa Jal and from the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. From there, obviously, with bringing those evidences, it makes these principles very clear and clarifies them without a doubt nothing's missing from that and they are apparent as can be and there's no doubts with regard to them and the sheikh says with that then 
And having said all of that in terms of clarification and how apparent it is and how clear it is, then having said that, then many people have deviated from these principles and from the correct way and the straight path. And so uh, the Shaykh goes on to say that the original author, the, the Imam, Rahimullah, he gives advice. This is advice, this book is advice with regards to these principles, uh, with regards to these foundational principles, the six principles as, as, uh, as he named the book, regarding this deen and, uh, and, and the evidences. Uh, and the six principles are from the, the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the Prophet uh, and it and he also it also points us or indicates us or shows us the importance and the magnificence of these uh, principles and at the same time it also shows us uh, uh, you know points or situations where people have deviated and fallen into error because of their lack of understanding or not Understanding the principles properly with regards to these principles which are from the Quran. So then, uh, uh, as uh, so, uh, most of you will be aware, in the bold writings, the original book, Sula Sita, and then the normal text here after the bold right, uh, the bold writing. That's the explanation. So the Sheikh is going to quote the original text, and then uh, he'll explain, and we'll, we'll translate that, inshallah. So the Shaykh, uh, he begins uh, his book, he says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And he says, Min a'jab al-ujab wa akbar al-ayat al-dalati ala qudrat al-malik al-ghalab sittatu usool bayyanahu Allahu ta'ala bayanan wadihan lil-awam fawqa ma yadunu dhanun thumma ba'd hadha ghalata fihi kathirun min azkiya al-alam wawqala ibani adam illa aqal al-qaleel. So then the Shaykh goes on to say here, and uh, the Shaykh will explain this in more detail uh, below. Uh, so if you don't understand something, uh, it will be clarified later on. So the Shaykh says, from the, from the most amazing things, and this is just um, in terms of amazing, being amazed, being shocked by what follows. So from those amazing things and from the biggest evidences that demonstrate um, the ability or the capability of the king, i.e. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the overpowering, the king that overpowers everything, that has control of everything, are these six principles that Allah clarified, Allah ta'ala clarified with a clear clarification, clear as day um, to the general, to, to everyone, the awam, lil awam, to, to, to the general public, to everyone, to the masses. Above that which the people think. Now, uh, that we'll understand what that means later on. So, uh, far above what the people think, because uh, this will relate later on with the Sheikh mentions that you might think that you understand the principle or people may read and think or may have come across these principles from the Quran, for example, but they haven't actually understood them. And so, therefore, uh, he mentions here, far above what the people think, what they think of them, right? We will understand this more, inshallah, as we go on. Then the Shaykh says here, Thumma ba'da hadha. So uh, from this sentence uh, towards the end, he says, and after that, then many people have erred. They've erred from the intelligent ones and those who possess intellect from Bani Adam, except a little. So having said all of that in terms of uh, these principles are being clear, you know, they're easy to understand. With all of that, people have. Uh, had an erroneous understanding of these principles and only a few from the people actually understand them as they should be understood. Yeah, so the Sheikh is mentioning here. So then uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak al-Badr then begins the explanation here in the paragraphs that, uh, that are below. Um, starting from here, we can see where my cursor is, inshallah. So then the Sheikh says, الشيخ رحمه الله بدأ هذه الرسالة بذكر إذن شأن هذه الأصول الستة وأنها قد بينت في كتاب الله عز وجل وبينت في وبينت في سنة رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
صلوات الله وسلامه عليه بيانا وافيا وقد ذكر رحمه الله هذه الأصول وأشار في بداية حديثه أنها أنها أصول ستة وذكره رحمه الله لهذا الرقم في بداية حديثه عن هذه الأصول الستة نوع من الإيانة لطالب العلم على ضبط العلم فلو أنه ذكر هذه الأصول نصرا دون إشارة إلى رقم يجمعها ربما ضعف ضبط الطالب ضبط طالب العلم لها لكن إذا قرأها طالب العلم وعرف أنها ستة استجمع ذهنه لضبطها وهذا من هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في سنته عليه الصلاة والسلام قال ثلاث من كن في وقال وقال ثلاث من كن فيه وجد حلاوة الإيمان وقال إذمنوا لي ستا من أنفسكم أذمن لكم الجنة أستقوا إذا هدثتم وأوفوا إذا وعدتم وأدوا إذا أؤتمنتم واحفظوا فروجكم وغذوا أبصاركم وكفوا أيديكم وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام اجتنبوا السبع الموبقات فيأتي أنه عليه الصلاة والسلام مثل هذا كثير فلا يذكر الأمور نثرا فإنما يذكر لها رقم يحويها بحيث تضبط المسائل المقصود المقصود بيانها والأصول المقصود تقريرها وإيداحها ولهذا قال رحمه الله ستة ستة أصول Okay, so let's go through that paragraph first. So then the Sheikh says that uh, the the Sheikh, the original author, may Allah must be upon him. He begins with he begins his treatise, his book, by mentioning the uh, the greatness uh, of these six principles, you know, and the and the position of these six principles and their greatness. And he, the Sheikh says here that he clarifies uh, uh, that have been clarified in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that have been clarified in the Sunnah. Of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as well, that have been clarified clearly in the book and the Sunnah. And then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says that, uh, um, and that the Sheikh he mentions these principles or these usul, and he indicates in uh, uh, in in the beginning of his speech that there are six principles. So he mentions the principles, but he, he indicates to us that there are six. Uh, and the mentioning of the number, the rakam, the number, in the beginning of his speech, uh, of these six principles, and telling us that they are six in number, then this helps, the Sheikh says that this helps the student of knowledge, the one who's studying like us, for example, it helps us to know the exact knowledge. So when we are seeing this, we will remember now the six principles, and we'll be able to then remember and clarify each of the principles once we learn. And then, but we know that there are six principles Instead of just saying there are important principles The Sheikh has mentioned That there are six and that helps us because we remember then Okay there are six principles and then we can Then go back and find okay the first principle Is this the second and so on and so forth Until the end so we can It helps us to uh, be exact About the knowledge that we Attain And it helps us just to remember as well uh, When we are referring back to it Alhamdulillah so the Sheikh says that this is the way of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as well. This is uh, this is uh, the way and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as well. And then he mentions a few hadith. He just quotes to us as examples, so we can see for ourselves. So you can see in the green highlighted text here, where uh, from uh, uh, several hadith. The first one, three, uh, who, who, whoever finds these three within him, as in characteristics, uh, if you find three of of these. Uh, obviously the whole hadith is not mentioned But if you find three of these Then you'll find that the person reaches The sweetness of iman Of faith Right So we can see the numbers are being mentioned uh, Though the uh, the third hadith <coughs> Guarantee me six Six Guarantee me six from your own selves I will guarantee you paradise and When you speak be truthful and honest uh, You know if you promise Then you know Execute those promises. Hold your promises. Don't break them. Uh, if you're entrusted with something, then act by that and don't break trust. Uh, um, preserve 
your uh, chastity, you know, be, be chaste. Yeah, preserve your private parts. Lower your gaze. So stay away from lust. Lower your gaze. Avoid lust. Lustful look, yeah. So um, um, lower your gaze and restrain your hands, you know, from harming people. You know, restrain your hands. And then the Sheikh brings another uh, 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 hadith or mention just to help us as well from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, which is the final one, as you can see. Avoid the seven destroyers or the cardinal sins. Avoid the seven cardinal sins or the, the sins that destroy, that destroy the seven destroyers. And those sins are the worst. Yeah. So the Sheikh obviously will continue. will continue. So these are just examples for us to understand that the numbers being mentioned. Why? To help us be exact. Inshallah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say that this is the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know, there are, there are many hadiths like this, as you were mentioned like this. And numbers are mentioned to help us have the, have exact knowledge and precision. Yeah, and pointing out that, uh, the points as well. And that's the intention from this. That's what the intention of mentioning these points. And this is the intention of why the Sheikh, the original author, mentioned six principles. Yeah, to help us to ex be exact and help us to recall that as well. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, وَقَوْلُهُ أُسُولُ الْأَصَلُ هُوَ مَا يُبْنَ عَلَيْهِ غَيْرِ وَهُوَ الْأَسَاسِ لِغَيْرِ وَهَذَا تَنْبِيهٌ مِنَ الْمُصَنِّفِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ إِلَى أَنَّ هَذِهِ مِنَ الْأُسُولِ الْكِبَارِ وَالْقَوَائِدِ الْجَوَامِ الْكُلِّيَّةِ وَمَا أَنَّهَا أُسُولُ وَقَوَائِدِ إِلَى أَنَّهُ قَدْ ظَلَّ فِيهَا أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ وَبَادَ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ هَذِهِ الرِّسَالَةِ بِتَعَجُّبِ الشَّدِيدِ الَّذِي طَرَحَهُ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ مُتَعَجِّبًا وَطَرَحَهُ أَيْضًا لِطَالِبِ الْعِلْمِ لِيُشَارِكَهُ فِي تَعَجُّبِ وَتَأَمُّلِ فِي هَذَا الْأَمْرِ وَلِهَذَا بَدَأَ الرِّسَالَةِ بِقَوْلِهِ مِنْ مِنْ أَعْجَبِ الْعُجَابِ أي من أشد الأمور إثارة للعجب للعجب في الأذهان. So uh, all of us here uh, in the, uh, today's lesson, we all know this already, but I'll just mention it briefly only, so uh, we can carry on. Uh, the meaning of usul, we all know what the meaning of usul is. Uh, that's the uh, it's the plural of al asal, which is a foundation. And the Sheikh mentions this as we all all brothers here know that uh, that a foundation. Is uh, is something that something else is built upon it. So foundation is is uh, what you use to build something upon, as we all know. Foundations of a house, for example, or a building. We all know that the foundation it's there so that things or objects can be placed upon it, built upon it. We all know that the sheikh mentions this. And then the sheikh also says that this is uh, just to uh, point our attention uh, is to point our attentions uh, towards. Uh, that these are major principles and yeah, major principles that I mentioned here, <coughs> the six principles, the major principles from our religion. Um, uh, and, um, and, and with having, you know, having said that, that many people have uh, um, been misguided of, uh, from these major principles, they've not understood them. Um, and then the Sheikh mentions just towards the end of this paragraph regarding um, um, uh, the 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 shock, you know, the ajab, the uh, being startled, uh, and the amazement, because and he he uh, the, the sheikh says that the original author he he, he uh, kind of wants us, he wants the seek of knowledge to share in this amazement that even though these principles are clear, are clear cut, easy to understand, many people have um, uh, you know deviated. And not understood them properly, and he wants us to take part in that, uh, that amazement and shock that 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 he that he that he felt at the time of writing, that he feel he felt um, because of how clear these principles are, and how many people have deviated away from them. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Wa akbarul ayat wa 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 akbarul ayat dalati ala qudrat al Malik al Ghalab." The Sheikh says, "La hada al-an nabha ala amrain, nabha ala an al-usul al-ati taqriruha ma mukhalafati akthar al-nasi laha ragma wuduhiha tadlu ala amr ajib jiddan fi hal al-nasi wa waqihim wa tadlu aydan fi al-wakt nafsi ala kamal kudrat Allah Subhanahu wa Taala." 
So then the Shaykh uh, goes on to say, he's explaining the other part of, 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 of what we read earlier in the emboldened writing, that from the uh, greatest signs that demonstrate to us the completeness and capability of Allah Jalla wa'ala, and he mentions Allah Jalla wa'ala here as uh, Al-Malik Al-Ghalab, the, the, the king, the, the owner of everything, the one who controls everything, nothing passes by him except it's in his control. Then the Sheikh mentions here that there's two affairs he points us towards. The first affair is that the six principles that will come and um, will be shown to us and, and will be explained to us. And with that, that many of the people, even though these principles are clear, uh, as mentioned earlier, that many of the people um, uh, have uh, deviated from them uh, and not understood them properly and, and not implement them properly and do not understand them and have deviated in, in the eventual end point, deviate from these six major principles from the Quran and the Sunnah. And this is the reason for the original author, the Sheikh, Rahmullah, his amazement and his shock because of how clear the principles are and easy to understand and implement. But having said that, many people, the vast majority of people, have st- uh, deviated. And at the same time, it also shows us the, the, the ability, the qudra, the ability and the power of Allah Jalla Wala that you know you'll see intelligent people you know uh, the most intelligent in the world from the uh, you know uh, smartest people in the world but they deviate away from these 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 principles and that shows us ultimately the completeness and the power of Allah Jalla wa'ala, that Allah is complete in everything right so uh, then the Sheikh goes on to say ala qudratil malik al ghalab uh so then the Shaykh continues here and he says, أي الذي بيده الملك المتصرف في هذا الكون عطاء ومنعا خفضا ورفعا قبضا وبسطا يعز ويذل ويخفض ويرفع ويؤطي ويمنع ويهدي ويذل الذي يتأمل هذه الأصول الستة وواقع الناس معها تدلها على كمال قدرة الملك الغلاب الغلاب كما قال الله تعالى وَاللَّهُ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ غَالِبٌ عَلَىٰ أَمْرِهِ أَيْ حُكْمُهُ نَافِذٌ لَا مُعَقَّبَ لِحُكْمِهِ وَلَا رَادَ, ولا راد لِقَضَائِهِ يَتَصَرَّفُ فِي مَمْلَكَتِهِ فِي مَمْلَكَتِهِ وَفِي مَخْلُقَاتِهِ كَيْفَ شَاءَ وَيُدَبِّرُهَا تَبَارِكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ كَمَا يُرِيدْ مَا شَاءَ كَان وَمَا لَمْ يَشَاءَ لَمْ يَكُن uh, من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ما ي... ما يفتح الله للناس من رحمة فلا ممسك لها وما يمسك فلا مرسل له من بعده فالأمر بيده تبارك وتعالى uh, so we'll just stop there for a second we'll stop there for a second because this is long so then the Sheikh continues just from from my left off and he's focusing on uh, uh, the Qudra, uh, the Qudra of Allah, the ability, Allah's ability, right? And he says Al-Malik, and we all know what Al-Malik is, you know, the king, the owner of everything. And, and as we know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns everything. All his creatures, the owner of everything. And uh, uh, and the Shaykh goes on to say that, you know, and uh, from Allah's actions are the following. For example, he gives and he prevents, he gives something to someone and he prevents other people from it. You know, he uh, he he, uh, he might um, lower somebody in stature and raise somebody else. He may take something from someone and give something else. He might raise somebody and lower someone else in, for example, uh, uh, in their status, uh, and and so on and so forth. Uh, Allah uh, may guide a group of people or a person, and he may, uh, because of what in that is in that person's heart, may misguide another person. And if we, the Sheikh says, if we ponder over these six affairs, which will come, which the Sheikh is to explain to us, if we, ponder, if we ponder over these six principles and the situation of the people with regards to them, then it, it shows us, uh, it, it shows us the completeness, the complete capability of Allah Jalla wa'ala, the, the king and the one who is in control and nothing overpowers him and he overpowers everything. Yeah. And it shows us this sheer ability, this which we can't comprehend fully, but we understand it. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, the power of Allah Jalla wa'ala. And then the Shaykh brings uh, uh, a couple of ayahs here. So let's read the first one uh, from Surah to Yusuf 21. And he, the man from Egypt who bought him, said to his wife, Make his stay comfortable. May he be, uh, maybe he will profit us or, sh- or we shall adopt him as a son. Thus did we establish Yusuf Joseph in the land that we might teach him the interpretation of events. And this is what we should pay attention here. The end of the ayah. And Allah has full power and control over his affairs, but most of men don't know. Most men don't know. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, and what does Ghalib mean? Ghalab or Ghalib. A lot of us who know Urdu, if we know Urdu, some of the brothers do, they'll know what this means. But anyway, um, Ghalibun ala amrihi, i.e. the Shaykh says, i.e. in in his uh, judgment, in executing uh, an action for example if Allah wants something to happen it happens there's there's no stopping it there's nobody coming afterwards to stop it when he ha- when he when he wills for it to occur uh, and there isn't anybody to stop that decision or the action from occurring they, they, they can't do anything once Allah says it is that is it yeah in his kingdom and he does whatever he wills in his kingdom however he wills he 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 takes uh, uh, he he uh, he manages his kingdom, Tabarka uh, uh, the way he the one the way he wants. Uh, so if he wants something to happen, it happens, and if he doesn't want something to happen, it won't happen. Then nobody else could do anything, as we all know. And then the Sheikh brings an example. He says, "May Yahdihillahu fala mudillala, wa may yudil fala hadiyala." So, so whoever Allah guides, then none can misguide. And whoever he misguides, none can guide. So if Allah has, when Allah has decided something, it is, that is it. No going back, can change. When Allah decides to do something, it's going to happen. And there's no doubt about that. And then the Sheikh brings another ayah from Surah to fatir uh, And he, uh, and here if we go to Surah to fatir let's go there. Verse 2, let's get the meaning. Whatever of mercy, i.e. of good, Allah may grant to mankind, none can withhold it. And whatever he may withhold, none can grant it thereafter. And he is the Almighty, the All-Wise. So that helps us understand as well, at the previous example that the Shaykh gave. As we can see, that's very clear for us. So let's continue then. So then the Shaykh says that the affair, all of the affair, or the affairs, are in the hands of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. So then the Sheikh continues, he says, So then the Sheikh says, um, the Sheikhs already mentioned this up here, so we won't translate that. Be- uh, just, it's just repetition, so uh, for us. Uh, because this is, uh, just for anybody who doesn't know, this is um, a live lesson that's been uh, transcribed um, uh, or has been taken off. So uh, 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 you know, these were from actual live lessons. And then some of the students from the, the Sheikh students have actually written this in Arabic from recordings from for, you know, during the lesson. So this is as if the actual lesson is going on. It's not summarized or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, so there may be some areas of repetition. So the Sheikh continues. He says, "Qala wa akbar al-ayat dala ala kudat al-Malik al-Ghalab sitati usul bayna Allah Taala bayan wadhan lil-awam fuqa ma yadun zanun." Unzur huna, unzur huna ila taqid al-musannif rahimahu Allah ala wudhuhi hadi al-usul sita wa wudhuh bayan wa wudhuh bayaniha. في كتاب الله عز وجل وستة وسنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بينه الله بيان واضحا أي 
جالها امور بينه ليست ملتبسه واضحة اي ظاهرة لكل احد ليس فيها خفاء ولا ولا يكترثها غموض ولا يلابسها تاكيد بل هي واضحة ظاهرة في كتاب الله عز وجل وكذلك في في سنة نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم. So then the Sheikh says, it is, uh, we're carrying on from uh, where we left off. The Sheikh says, so with regards to, uh, if, he says, if you look here, the, 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 the author, the author emphasizes, may Allah have mercy upon him, emphasizes upon the uh, clearness of the six principles and the clearness and in his, in his clarification and how clear it is from the book of Allah Azawajal and from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then in brackets, as you can see, Bayanahullah Bayan Wadihan, taken from the original text that where the Shaykh, the original Shaykh says, the original author says that Allah clarified uh, these principles clearly. Clear as day, as we mentioned earlier, clear as day. Yeah. So then the Shaykh continues, he says that these uh, affairs he made these affairs clear clear and easy to understand there's no doubt about them when you're reading them when you're going through them they are clear uh, for everybody they are clear for everyone there isn't anything hidden from you or hidden there isn't any mysteriousness to it uh, there isn't uh, anything of that from mystery or doubt or unclearness it's clear and apparent uh, in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Unlike that from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this is what the Shaykh said in this paragraph. And so we continue. Bayanan wadihan lil awam. Ay an an wuduha hadihi laysa amran muhtassan bi ahli l-ilm aw bi rasikhina fil ilmi. Bal hiya wadihatun lil awam. Fadlan amman huwa arfa'u minhum. وَأَعْلَمُ مِنْهُمْ وَأَفْقَهُ مِنْهُمْ وَادِحَةٌ لِلْأَوَامِ تَمَامًا فَوْقَ مَا يَظُنُّهُ الظَّانُونَ So let's just stop there for a second. So then the Shaykh says that it's, it's clear to the general people. What does it mean? Uh, the, Shaykh says, the Shaykh says here that what it means is that it's not, this, this, it's not clear just to the people of knowledge or the scholars or you know uh, the ones who are deeply or firmly rooted in knowledge of, of of the deen of Islam, of the religion, but it's for everyone. It's clear to everyone. It's clear to the general person, whether it's a scholar or not. It's clear to the general person. This is how clear it is to clear to the general person. So it's not specifically uh, uh, meant. There's no specific attachment, or it's constricted to. Uh, a particular group of people is for the, is it's for it's the general public for example the general public is clear to them that's how clear it is you know whether somebody is knowledgeable than you for example or has more understanding than you or not it, everyone can understand this and then the sheikh says he says يَعْنِي قد يظنها الإنسان واضحة لكن وضوحها القوي الظاهر البين فوق ما يظنه الظانو ومتى ومتى يظهر هذا المعنى الذي قاله الشيخ رحمه الله عندما يتأمل المسلم أنواع الأدلة الواردة في الكتاب والسنة في تقرير هذه الأصول وأنها أقيمت عليه الحجج البينات بأنواع من الأدلة بحيث أن هذا البيان لهذه الأصول فوق ما قد يظن لا من حيث تنوع الأدلة ولا من حيث أيضا كثرة عددها. So then the Sheikh saying here, what does it mean? Uh, he says فوق ما يظنه الظانون. And he, the Sheikh goes on to explain to us what does that mean. He clarifies to us. He says that it means that that people, you know, think that it's clear or it means such and such, or in terms of its clarity. However, it's it's more clearer than what people think. Just emphasizing that it's that these six principles are, are extremely clear. There's no doubt. There's no mystery. There isn't anything hidden. It's you take your face value. You can see it's clear and you understand it. You should understand it perfectly. And that's what the Sheikh is 
trying to get across here and he mentions here and even uh, and even so even though that there are many evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah even though that there's numerous evidences but with having said that it's 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 clear it's clear and so if the Muslim is reading these six principles and looks at its evidences and he ponders over them he will see that you know how clear it is and the Sheikh trying to emphasize here that uh, in that paragraph that it's 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 even more clearer than what people might think, you know. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, Al Aslul Awla Ladi Sayati al Hadith and Hu Kala ibn al Kayyim Rahimullah in Amata Ayah in Amata Ayat al Quran fi Takridihi, Aladi Hu al Ikhlas, what the Hadir bin the Shirki Kala Bal Kulu Ayatin fi Quran, Fiha Takrid li Tawheed, Fashahid and the Hadi al Usul, Buyinet Bayan and Wadi Abayinet Bayan and Wadihan. لا خفا فيه ليس هذا البيان لأهل العلم أو للراسخين في العلم بل للعوام بحيث يفهمها كل من يفهم اللسان العربي الذي أنزل به القرآن الكريم. So then the Sheikh goes on to say in this paragraph that that uh, that the first principle from the six principles, the first principle that will come and the commentary on that will come soon to come. He mentions just an excerpt, excerpt here that. Ibn Al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, another scholar uh, from previous times, another great scholar from previous times, said that that the generality of these of these evidences from the Quran, these ayat of the Quran, uh, in uh, in terms of uh, the evidence and what's been brought forth and what's been mentioned, is with regards to ikhlas, sincerity, warning, a tahdir warning from shirk, as we all know from some of the other books that we've we've read through, and he says rather all of these. All of the verses of the Quran in it is evidence or reports of Tawheed. You will see in every in every ayah of the Quran there is Tawheed of Allah Jalla wa'ala. So the Shaykh says the point is that these uh, these principles uh, have been clarified clearly without anything hidden or left out. Uh, and also that this clarification it isn't for the people of knowledge or the deeply rooted scholars, uh, or the deeply rooted in knowledge, it's not just for them. Rather, it's for the general people. From where that they, they can, they, they are able to understand it, all of it, if they understand the Arabic language. Obviously, this has been, uh, obviously this is in the Arabic language, uh, but obviously we're translating it. So the language that we're translating it into, as well for all of us, uh, general folk, we can understand this. Yeah? The Shaykh goes on to say, he says, ثم بعد هذا ثم بعد هذا كله غلط فيها كثير من من الأذكى العالم. So then, after all of that, going towards the end of the Shaykh's original statement on the first page, then the Shaykh says, after the original author says, after all of this, then many have erred from the intelligent ones in in the world. The Shaykh says, a ragma. وضوحها الشديد وبيانها البين البين وكونها لا خفاها فيها والالتباس مع ذلك كله غلط كثير من أذكياء العالم هنا قوله غلط فيها هنا العجب وهنا ظهور الآية آية التي قال آيات آيات ضالت آيات ضالت على قدرة الملك ف فهنا العجب تعجب غاية العجب عندما يكون هناك طريق يوصل إلى البلد المقصود واللوحات الإرشادية للطريق كثيرة جدا كلما تمشي خطوتين تجد لوحة إرشادية طريق طريق مكة وسهم يشير إليه ثم تمضي والطريق أيضا تجد السهم يشير ثم تمضي وتجد السهم يشير ثم في الوقت نفسه تجد كثيرا من الناس يريدون مكة ولكنهم يأخذون ذات اليمين وذات الشمال ويذيعون ويذلون وينحرفون هذا أمر في غاية العجب لأنك إذا تأملت وضوح الطريقة وكثرة اللوحات الإرشادية الدالة عليه ثم نظرت أكثر الناس ينحرفون عنه ثم 
تتساءل تقول هل التاريخ غير واضح ستقول لك نفسك وهل أوضح من هذا هل أزيد من هذا الوضوح ما أمشي خطوة أو خطوتين إلا وأجد لوحة إرشادية تدل وتوضح فهذا أمر في غاية العجب كثرة الدلائل والحجج والبراهين ثم في الوقت نفسه كثرة المنحرفين والزائغين والضالين فهذا أمر في مثار للعجب وتعجب وفيه أيضا دلالة على أن الأمور بيد الله سبحانه وتعالى الأمور بيد الله الهداية بيد الله الاستقامة بيد الله So we'll just stop, let's just stop here for a second So just stop there, I'll put the cursor there Because it brings another point So, and this is a long paragraph as you can see It's, it's quite long um, So then going towards the end part of the statement The Sheikh says ثم بعد هذا كله غلطة فيها كثير من أذكياء العالم so then after all of this, in terms of these six principles being clear as day, you know, uh, the general masses can understand them and should be able to understand them. Then having said all that, many people, many of the people, they err in their understanding. And as actually many of the intelligent people who give intelligence in the world, you know, on our planet, they err and they stray away. So what the Sheikh is saying here in, in this in this section up until where we stopped, he mentions something from before that we've read, and then he mentions, for example, that that even though you know the the these principles in the taken from the Quran, the Sunnah, they're clear as day. They're easy to understand. That the general people can general people can understand. Like, cause you know you don't have to be a scholar to understand them. Uh, but even then, many people, the and uh, people with intellect as well, many of them there. They stray away on the earth. So he brings an example just to compare. Uh, and he says, for example, like if you're on the way to uh, a city, and you just use an example, for example, you're on the highway, for example, you want to go to Mecca. Let's, we'll use our example. We're in England. Uh, let's say, you know, we're in a city. We want to go to London. There's signs on the highway for London. We, we you know, we know where to go. That every few miles there are, you know, there are signs helping us get to where we need to and there's plenty of pointers and that there's arrows there you know go this way take a left you know you know all that as you all know but having said all that with all these with all that clarity of how to get to one place to another people you know they go off the road you know they, they get lost you know they deviate from that path and he gives this example and and, and that's where the amazement or the astonishment comes from that it's so clear if you just follow it from one one instruction to the next, uh, uh, you know, it, you'd understand and be guided. But even with that said, then people still deviate from the path, still deviate from these principles, from the Quran and the Sunnah, etc. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here, he says, وَفِيهِ أَيْدٍ دِلَالْتٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ الْأُمُورِ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانُ وَتَعَالَىٰ And so this... Nicely arrives, we we come to this point that the Shaykh mentions that shows us that all of the affairs are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, even though the signs are there, you know, if you follow them, you'd get there. But even then, you know, people get lost, don't they? We know that people go off the route, they get lost, they end up somewhere else. So why? Because the affair is in Allah's hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then he goes on to say, الأمور بيد الله الهداية بيد الله الاستقامة بيد الله صلاح العبد بيد الله توفيقه بيد الله سلوكه للطريق القويم بيد الله كل الأمور بيده تبارك وتعالى وقد سئل أرابي قيل له بما عرفت ربك قال بنقد العزائم وحل الحمم عرفت, عرفت ربي بهذا أن أزمي على شيء أو, هم أو, همت أو همتي على أمر على أمر من الأمور تتنقض وأتجه إلى غيره وأن وأنا عازم إلى أمر معين وإذا بي أتوجه إلى آخر فهذا يدل على أن الأمور لله تبارك وتعالى وليس هذا معناه أن العبد لا مشيئة له ولا اختيار بل للعبد مشي بل للعبد مشيئة يدل عليها النصوص في كتاب الله وسنة نبيه عليه الصلاة والسلام ويدل عليها واقع للإنسان لو تأمل الإنسان واقع لو تأمل الإنسان واقعه 
وحياته وامور يجد ان عنده مشيئه واضحه انه مشيئه يختار فيها طريق الخير وطريق الشر ومشيئه تحت مشيئه الله قال تعالى so let's just stop there for a second so then the shaykh says here that the affairs are and ultimately the affairs are in the hands of Allah so he gives examples as he mentioned in the previous paragraphs guidance is in the hands of Allah uprightness is in the hands of Allah uh, for example your uprightness you know um, is in the hands of Allah you you know you being let's say was obviously correcting yourself for example being upright and uh, your affairs being upright in the hands of Allah you know uh, it, when you're traveling upon a path uh, for example uh, let's say you're traveling upon the Sirat al-Mustaqim the right path the middle way the right path you know then that's in the hands of Allah all of these affairs ultimately are in the hands of Allah and then the Sheikh brings um, a, a, a saying regarding a Bedouin who, who basically said that that um, you know when you have let's say you want to do something and you have that design you have, yes I need to do that I'm going to do this but then you get sidetracked and you go elsewhere because of X, Y and Z that you did not plan happens for example then, then this is a prime example of that that you may have willed something let's say okay I want to go to the masjid for uh, prayer or I want to go to this talk it's in the masjid and then somebody contacts you and you're, you know, you didn't expect that. And then you're diverted away from that. But your original plan and your will was to go over there. But then Allah will something else for you, you know, for example. Uh, and and well, this is what that, that saying is referring to. The Shaykh clarifies something. This doesn't mean that you don't have a will. It doesn't mean that, oh, like uh, we say, oh, like we, if somebody may say, for example, oh, uh, okay, I don't have any will then. Uh, Allah has control of everything and I'm not doing anything. That's not true. The so Sheikh clarifies here. He says that, as, as we all know, we have a will as well. Our will is under the will of Allah Jalla Wala. So our will, like today, for example, for this lesson, let's use me as an example. Uh, I, I could have just delayed it or I could have um, thought, you know, forget it. I'll do it next week or maybe I'll. I was feeling lazy or something and I said, oh, send a message to the brothers or in the group and say, uh, you know, no, I don't do it. Because I have a choice. You know, I, I could have done this lesson or I could not have done it. I had the choice, right? But ultimately we know that, that, that you know, all the affairs are in the hands of Allah, right? Now if he controls the universe, everything that happens within it. But we do have a will, like that example. You know, you have the will to do right and wrong. You know what's right, you know what's wrong. You have a choice. Some people may choose the wrong thing. Some people may choose the right thing because they made that willful, conscious choice. Yeah. So that's uh, that's what the Sheikh clarifies here. And so then the Sheikh brings an ayah from Surah to Taqweer, verse 29. And so if we go there and get the meaning, inshallah, verse 28 to 29. To whosoever among you who wills to walk straight, and you will not, unless it be that Allah wills, the Lord of the Alameen, mankind and all that exists. So then the Sheikh brings this as evidence as well. But we have to uh, distinguish this and make sure we understand it correctly that we have a will. We're not like the people who are called Qadariya or Jabariya. And for example, Jabariya will say, oh, you know, I'm doing all of this because Allah is making me do it. As in they're being forced. And there's a common saying as well, obviously us guys in the group now, we all speak Urdu, Punjabi, etc. We all know. The example is, we know the common phrase that we use, uh, uh, you know, when they say, Majburi, Majbur. That's, but originally, that's an Arabic word. What does it mean? Is when somebody says, sadly, <laughs> we say, but looking back at it now, we put in context, really, we probably shouldn't, we shouldn't use our word, Majbur. We're saying that we had no choice, you know, we did, oh, you know, Majbur. So, no, we're not Majbur. We have a choice. But whatever happens, we say Qadr Allah, Qadr Allah ma shafal. Yeah, we don't say Majbur or like as you made. So you were made to do it. You were under the arrest or something. Unless you actually were under the arrest, somebody had a, uh, somebody was forcing you, tied you up somewhere and did something. That That's something else. But generally speaking, this is where it comes from. Or, uh, or you are on the other end of the extreme with regards to uh, issues of will, where uh, you're saying that Allah does not know that what I will do and I create my own actions. That's obviously shirk. That's worse than 
if somebody says, oh, Allah's forcing me to do it. So we want to stay clear away from these kinds of uh, uh, erroneous um, um, beliefs. Yeah. So we have a will, but uh, it's, uh, our will is under the will of Allah. Jalla wa ala, yeah? And the Sheikh explained that, alhamdulillah. So uh, let's finish this. I'll try to finish this in the next five minutes and then we're done. This is the introduction, inshallah, complete. So then the Sheikh goes to say, Mentioned that earlier. وهذا فيه دلالة على أن الذكاء وحده لا يكفي العب في استقامة أموره وصلاح أحواله فكم ممن ذكاؤهم مفرد وذهنهم بقاد وفهمهم قوي لكنهم يذلون يألمون ظاهرا من الحياة الدنيا وهم عن الآخرة هم غافلون تجدهم في غاية الذكاء ذكاؤه خارق ذكاء خالق ذكاء خالق ذكاء قوي جدا لكن اهم امر اهم امر خلق لاجله اهم امر خلق لاجله ووجد لتحقيق ليس عنده منه خبر بل تعرض عليه حجج واضحات ودلائل مقنعات ويرفضها ويرفضها ويأباها ولا ولا يقبلها لا لكونه لا يفهم بل هو ذكي يفهم أمور دقيقة وأمور عصرة الفهم تجد يفهمها ثم يؤرد عليه أبين الأمور وأبين الأمور نعم أبين الأمور وأوضحها فلا يفهمها ولا تقبلها نفسه وتأبى قبولها so then like in this paragraph the Sheikh Kutri says that uh, you know, there are many evidences uh, um, that demonstrate to us, or the evidence that we just read earlier, that they demonstrate that that intelligence on its own is not sufficient. That you having the intellect and intelligence isn't, um, uh, the slave having this intelligence isn't sufficient for his uprightness or his rectification you know, or his, uh, of his affairs and his condition. He says, so how many of the, pe- how many of the people's um, intelligence has left them far away from uh, uh, in summary uh, how many of the people's intelligence has actually not got them anywhere, it hasn't actually got them to where they should be and what they need to actually understand in this world the sheikh says for example he, he brings he brings this and he goes because of that you know uh, even though they have intelligence they, 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 they've uh, uh, they're they misguided they, they, they are misguided so he brings the evidence from uh, Surah to room verse 7 Let's go to Surah Al-Rum, verse 7, um, which we read in Arabic. They know only the outside appearance of the life of the world, i.e. the matters of their livelihood, like irrigating or sowing or reaping, etc. And they are heedless of the hereafter. So the main point around here is the hereafter, because heedless of the hereafter. You find this, you find the person, for example, uh, you know, in, you know, extreme intelligence, you know, you know, it's, you know, impeccable. Their intelligence is is unbelievable. You know, s- the strength of their intelligence, just generally the intelligence that they have. However, the most important affair that they were created for and that they were brought into existence for, he hasn't even got any notion of of why he's here. No notion of it. And and rather, he rejects these evidences that are clear regarding why he was being brought here. On this planet, why is he here in existence? They reject it. They reject it, even though the evidences are con- they're contentful. They, you know, they, you know, when you look at them, they they make you content. But these people, they reject it and they go away from it and they don't accept it. Not because they don't understand. That's what she says. It's not because they don't understand. Rather, is they are intelligent actually and they do understand the affairs up until the minute affairs. Yeah, they understand them. Uh, and even the difficult affairs, they under, actually understand them. However, they choose to reject it and go away from it, uh, even though they are clear. Yeah. Yeah, so they have the intelligence and everything uh, in terms of these affairs. And, you know, the general affairs in dunya, they, they, you know, you see them doing many great things, but they, they just can't, they, they, they don't accept, can't understand these things, even though they're clear. 
So then the Sheikh mentions again that uh, he mentions the uh, uh, text he mentioned earlier on. He quotes again, "Wa ma adali ka gar tafiya kathir min adkiya alam ma qala bani adam." So again, that many of the intelligent ones have erred in this regard, and the ones who possess intellect from bani adam, the children of adam. Uh, so then the Sheikh goes on to say, "Wa ha ula aladina wasafu mu Sheikh rahmu Allah bi zakai hum fi alhakika utu kama yaqul Sheikh al Islam ibn Taymiya utu zakai wa lam yutu zakai." وأوتوا فهوما ولم يؤتوا علوما فما أغنى عنهم ذكاؤهم ولا ولا أغنت عنهم وقولهم وقولهم ولن ولن تفعوا بها وإذا كان عنده انتفاع بيقله فانتفع فانتفعه به محمود ينتهي بموته وليس ليقله فمر بعد موته ولهذا يندم أهل النار غاية الندم لأدم استعمالهم لوقولهم فيما خلقت لهم و Uh, so finally, um, the Sheikh mentions here that it's not that the intellects, for example, um, you know, um, uh, it's not as if that they, you know, is there anything to do with the intellects, for example. But he says here that uh, he mentions a, a quote from Sheikh uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah that they've been given intelligence, but they haven't been given the, that purification. Yeah, the purification, or they've been given uh, uh, understanding. But they actually haven't been given the knowledge. Uh, as in them, we give the knowledge of the deen. Like they might know everything else, but they just don't know what actually what they're sent for, the most important thing. And so then the Sheikh says here in, in this line here, he mentions that because of that, they, they leave this world with nothing. They've not actually, their, their intelligence, the extreme and great intelligence that they had hasn't actually benefited them, I think. They haven't profited from that. They haven't profited from that, really. And so, Yom uh, Al the Sheikh says that you know they'll be from the Nadi mean. You know they'll be regretful. They'll be in regret and sorrow. And then the Sheikh brings some ayahs from Surah Al Mulk, verse ten. Let's go through them quickly. Um, verse ten, Surah Al Mulk. And they will say, had we but listened or used our intelligence, we would not have been among the dwellers of the blazing fire. And then the Sheikh says, "Like in fasad al-aql, al-aql, one hiraf yafdi bil insan ila hada zalal." And so the Sheikh mentions that that the corruption of of your intelligence and your deviance is basically the result of this this lowliness that that these people will be faced with in the Yom Al-Qiyamah, basically. Except a few, aql al-kalil, except a few, except a few, and those are the people that Allah has given guidance to. And they understand these affairs, and by, by way of them understanding these principles, you know they'll be successful. Uh, and so the Sheikh brings uh, a few more ayahs. Let's go through them, and then we finish off with. He mentions some du'as here, and then we'll stop. So uh, the next uh, set of ayahs, uh, the first one is from Surah to Yusuf, verse one hundred and three. Um, and most of mankind will not believe even if you desire desire it eagerly. The next ayah is from Surah Sabah. We'll just skip that for a second. We'll read Surah to Yusuf, verse 106, because we're already here. And most of them believe not in Allah except that the attribute pan is unto him, i.e. they are mushrikun, polytheists. Let's go to Surah to Sabah. Towards the end of the ayah, but few of my slaves are grateful. Yeah? And few my f- uh, few of my slaves are grateful. Yeah. So the Sheikh uh, he just mentions here that these are he says these are some of the ayahs, but there's many evidences with regards to what we're talking about. Uh, and and you know he says there are many uh, of these ayahs. He says so the so the most people are misguided, but only a few are guided, and they're a small in number, and they've been given guidance, and they're upon the on the on the path of Allah, the straight path of Allah. And they are upright uh, upon the correct way, uh, traversing the correct path. And most of the people, they've they've been misguided. Uh, they misguided. On, yeah, they've been misguided from this straight path. And then in in you can see the highlight text here that the Sheikh says that the original author, may Allah have mercy upon him, his intention here and what he means by this introduction that we've just completed just about now is that is to point the student of knowledge. And to uh, point our attention and get our attention with regards to the affair, the importance of these six principles, the importance of these six great principles and their place uh, in our lives. 
And then the Sheikh goes on to say that it's important for us to understand these, you know, uh, and it's important for the, the student of knowledge uh, that, he, you know, that he truthfully accepts these and learns and understands them. Um, and he has his heart in it. And that, and by way of that, inshallah, he won't deviate from the straight path. And then the Sheikh mentions a few uh, du'as for us here uh, with regards to being firm. And these are well-known du'as that we all know. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabit qulub na la dini. O turn of the hearts, ay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O turn of the hearts, keep our, uh, keep, keep uh, uh, O turn of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your religion. And Allahumma laka aslamtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakaltu wa ilayka anabtu wa bika khasamtu a'udhu bi izzatika. لا إله إلا أنت أن تضلني فأنت الحي الذي لا يموت والجن والإنس يموتون. So this dua is also well known. And if you go to the meaning of that, uh, it is, um, O oh Allah, to you I have submitted, and in you do I believe, and in you I put my trust, and to you do I turn, and for you that I, uh, I uh, on to you that I argue, O oh Allah, see, I seek refuge with you through your power. There is none worthy of your power and might. There is none worthy of worship in truth except you alone. Uh, uh, that you safeguard me against going astray. You are the ever living, the one who sustains and protects all that exists, the one who never dies. Whereas human beings and the jinn will all die and die. So then. The final paragraph here, the Shaykh mentions, we'll just read this now, we're almost done. وَرَادَ أَيْدًا أَنْ يُنَبِّهَا لَا ذُرُورَةِ الْإِنَايَةِ بِهَذِ الْمَسَائِلِ وَالْإِنَايَةِ بِذَبْتِهَا وَإِنْتِقَانِهَا وَرَادَ أَنْ يُنَبِّهَا أَنَّ الذَّكَاءَ وَحْدًا وَلَا يَكْفِي إِذَا لَمْ يُرْزِقْ صَحِبَ السَّدَادِ وَتَوْفِيقَ مِنَ اللَّهِ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَلَى فلا يقر الإنسان بما عنده من ذكاء وما لديه من نباها فكم من الذكاء لم ينتفع بذكائه ولم يستفيد منه وراد أن ينبه أيضا على خطورة الشبهات. So then the Sheikh mentions here that um, that we, sh- we, sh- we shouldn't be misled by just our intelligence, for example, and that that the Sheikh says that Israel author mentions that it's important that we take care with regards to these six principles that we are precise with them, we understand them uh, uh, with complete uh, understanding and that we don't just rely on our own intelligence because as mentioned earlier, how many of the people that have possessed intelligence have actually not benefited a thing from their intelligence. And also here the Sheikh mentions with regards to um, uh, being warned from doubts. He says, وَعَلَى خُطُورَةِ الشُّبُهَاتِ وَأَنَّهَا تُضَرْ بِالنَّاسِ غَيَةِ الضَّرَرْ لِأَنَّهَا تَقْلِبُ الْحَقَّائِكْ وَتُخْلِطْ الْأَوَارِكْ وَتُرْدِ بِالنَّاسِ وَتُخِلْ بِالْأُقُولِ وَتُفْسِدِ الْأَذْحَانِ فَشُبُهَاتِ غَيَةٌ فِي فَشُبُهَاتِ غَيَةٌ فِي الْخُطُورَةِ وَإِذَا أَصْغَى الْإِنسَانَ لِشُبُهَ وَأَطَاهَا سَمِعَهُ أَذَرَهُ بِأَقْدِ بِأَقْدَتِهِ So just towards the end of this, what the Sheikh is saying here is that uh, with regards to uh, the danger of doubts and listening to the people of doubts, the people of misguidance, and that not that you shouldn't lend an ear to these people, nor should you listen anything of their doubts, because if that can enter your heart, and it could be the reason for your deviation. So you need to protect yourself and take care of yourself. This is what the Sheikh is mentioning uh, here. And then, uh, just let me have a look at, towards the end here. وَلَا يَقُلْ الْإِنسَانِ فِي هَذَا الْمَقَامِ أَنَّ إِنْدِي إِذَا كَانُ وَإِنْدِي يَقُلْ وَمَيِّزِ وَلَا تَلْتَظُرُنِي فَغَبْقَانِ And you shouldn't be like the person saying, you shouldn't be of the type of person that says, oh, I've got intelligence, I've got understanding, or I can't be affected, I'll be fine, I can take care of myself. No. And that's the reason for the du'as that the Sheikh mentioned, يَا مُقَلِّبَ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِتْ قُلُوبِ نَا دِينِ That we rely upon Allah and that we uh, we forward our all of our fare to Allah Jalla wa'ala, and that you know we take the ways and means, but we don't just solely rely on ourselves because uh, that's not possible, and that'll send you down the wrong path. And so then the Sheikh completes there, and he says that we'll just begin next next lesson. We'll begin the first principle, as you can see here. So inshallah, next week we will uh, begin the first principle, and then inshallah, hopefully the lesson will be a little bit shorter than today, uh, and it should take a few weeks to get through these. Uh, and we should hopefully have recordings as well for them for whoever can attend. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.